Hey everyone, today I want to put a garage heater kit inside this Frigidaire refrigerator. If you have a refrigerator in your unheated garage or a cold area, ironically, the colder it is outside, the warmer your refrigerator is in that unheated garage. And what you need to do to prevent this is to use this garage heater kit but the problem with it is it's going to run constantly. The compressor is going to run 24 seven. And if you don't unplug or unhook that heater kit over a year or two, you're going to run that compressor ragged and you can run the risk of having this actually melt and burn up. I've seen it a few times. So again, the switch and routing it is very, very important. And I want to show you how to do all that today. And I found a few tricks to do this and build a kit for it. It's super easy may take like five minutes. So let's get inside this and see what we're dealing with. At the moment, this refrigerator is actually plugged in and running, and we want to go ahead and unplug it as we will be disconnecting wires shortly. Once this is completed, let's go ahead and start removing all the shelving. Depending on a few factors, you can remove all the drawers in the refrigerator, but I was able to work with removing all but the bottom shelving in the case of this specific Frigidaire refrigerator. Next, we want to remove the cold control housing. You will need a quarter inch hex head screwdriver to remove these screws. On the front screws, a thick screwdriver like mine barely fits. I was able to remove the screws, however. When you begin to remove the two rear screws, you want to make sure to hold on with your other hand to the front of the control housing to prevent it from falling down when the screws get loose. When the screws are fully removed, you want to pull forward on the control housing to remove it as there is a small plastic tube going into the drain at the rear of the refrigerator. Then all that's left is removing the Molex harness that provides power to the control assembly and it's now fully removed. Ironically, this refrigerator had a heater kit already installed on it with no switch. You can clearly see the results. The heater has been scorched pretty bad by the connectors. I'm not even sure if this worked or not. Now, I did remove this heater from the control housing off camera, by the way. Before you buy the kit, make sure that your refrigerator can actually support such a kit. Your refrigerator can be a different model than this one, like a Whirlpool GE or what we have here, a Frigidaire, but it must contain a manual cold control like the one you see circled here in the picture. The heater kit needs a place with an AC electrical connection to tap into, as well as a manual thermostat to warm it up to trick it into operating constantly, thereby keeping it cold enough in a very cold garage. The first step to install the new heater kit is to remove the defrost timer to get it out of the way at least. To do that, there are two small Phillips head screws on the opposite side of the housing that need removed. Make sure to save these screws once you remove them. Next, it's a good idea to remove the cold control. You can do this first by removing the cold control knob from the control housing. Then you will push two small levers towards the back of the control housing to allow you to pull the cold control up and then out. You can also choose to remove the connectors from the door switch as well, but I didn't really find it was needed for this particular installation. To drill into the plastic, you need to either use a step drill bit or a three quarter inch bit of another factor. I decided to make the hole over the top of a burnt spot from the former heater to the rear of the screw cavity. But really in hindsight, I would recommend drilling to the front of the screw cavity because there's less interference from other wires. Just make sure to plan ahead based on the wire situation. My camera died during the first cut of the step drill bit, but you can see how easy a step drill bit makes this job. Once you have the right size cut, you can then thread the switch in and it should easily snap into place with a retainer. If the hole is a little too large, you can use something like a plastic glue to secure it in place if needed. Here's the interface with the switch now installed. We're going to now install the garage heater kit itself. Optionally, depending on the setup, there's a paper backing on the heater that allows for a sticky side to adhere to the cold control. Installing with the sticky side can get messy if you can't fit it just right, so I didn't do it on this particular installation. To install the kit, there are three holes in the garage heater that line up with the defrost timer, and you need to carefully put them in place and line them up. You'll usually have to move the white thermostat, but that part shouldn't be difficult. Once it's in place, you can go ahead and install the two screws back into the timer on the other side. Now it is time to join everything together. I'm going to take my first posi lock and unscrew one collar, then fit it on the black heater kit wire. Once it is on, I am going to twist the black wire and then tighten it to the center of the posi lock system. I'm then going to unscrew the other collar of the posi lock to attach it to the black wire on the switch that we installed previously. This now means the garage heater kit is connected to one side of the switch to toggle the heater off and on. Next, I am taking the red wire from the switch 
and installing it to the PosiLock collar in the PosiLock hub. The key to using these PosiLocks properly is making sure you push as much wire around the centerpiece as possible, then tightening it down as snugly as possible. These PosiLocks are designed for motorcycles and cars when you put a huge strain on a connection or splice, so these really can never become undone in a refrigerator in this case. Now remember, if you want this kit, I do have it in the description and the comments as well. I am now taking the small black wire that is stripped on one end with a piggyback connector on the other and installing the stripped side into the posi lock to complete the connection with the toggle switch. With the switch installed, let's complete the setup by installing the heater and switching system to the cold control that's been removed from the housing earlier in the video. First, we want to unplug the connectors one at a time, then install the heater's piggyback connector to the cold control so we don't confuse which control wire goes where. Once the piggyback is in place, reinstall the insulated cold control wire. We are going to then do the exact same thing with the second wire. Remove the insulated wire, install the piggyback wire, then reinstall the cold control wire. When you have both installed, you are then going to seat the cold control back into the control housing and it should click into place to lock. Finally, you're going to put the cold control knob back in and you're essentially all done with the heater kit and switching system installation. Having finished the installation, you may have some of a wire mess though with the addition of the four new wires you installed, so I suggest using some cable ties to tidy up the system as best you can. I always use high temperature cable ties, especially in the case of a refrigerator, just so that they don't melt and create more of a problem over the long term. And finally, always make sure to cut the ends of the cable ties off as well. The setup is clean and I'm happy with it overall. Well, other than the fact that I forgot to reinstall the screws to the defrost timer when shooting the video, but that's an easy off-camera fix. All that is now left is to reinstall the modified cold control system. To reinstall the cold control system, you want to put the plastic drain tube on the cold control housing into the refrigerator's cabinet drain tube housing. Once it is in place, reinstall the Molex connector from the cold control. I suggest then starting with one of the front screws because even just one screw will hold the whole assembly in place, allowing you to be able to maneuver more when needed. And then you're going to carefully install the remaining three screws to the housing and then you are completed with reinstalling the cold control housing. Now we can plug the refrigerator back in and verify that it runs the compressor showing the cold control works. The switch is labeled zero or O for off and I for on. So you can set it to whether you need to use it in heat or not at this time. I hope this video helps you and make sure to consider buying this pre-assembled kit that we made for this easy installation and I hope you have a great day.